You're listening to the Doug Stanhope Podcast. We'll work it out later. <laughs> work it out right now, whispering while we're on the podcast. That's Wait, funny. I didn't know. Well, we, I don't have sound, so you said you're playing I the intro. Like this. Oh, you looking at me? Uh, uh, there was, was, there was kerfuffle. He was, he was, there was kerfuffle this. going on around me. I, I wasn't even on the mic just then either. So. <laughs> 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 I picked up my coffee. <laughs> we are back from Las Vegas. Chad Shank and uh, Greg Chaley. I left early. I just watched your issues with Andy. The wrap up of your <laughs> Vegas trip. You watched a podcast? Wow. <laughs> on time and a half. I was just seeing how much of my dick Andy stepped on. And? Stuff that I wanted to talk about from Vegas. And no, he can't he can't keep a train of thought. He was <laughs> yep. every time something came up, I'm like, fuck, I wanted I wanted that story from Chad Shank. And then no, Andy would derail it. You'll get the middle and end on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, no, you'll get the beginning and the end. <laughs> Andy just jumps right to the middle. You go, where did he? He was just talking about flags. <laughs> and now it's, it's about his hotel room. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> he had some very good lines in there. Yeah. Oh, it's always great. Always funny. And uh, Tommy Rocker was, he's starting to get into podcasts now. They're going to start doing, uh, they're doing the NFL draft next year in Vegas because of the oh, yeah. uh, cause of Raiders. Raider. Well, Tommy Rocker's. Other than being a, a a club for the Oregon Ducks, which played that night, they're also a Miami Dolphins team uh, club or bar, mm-hmm. right? So they're going to be doing podcasts from his bar with the Miami organization when they're doing the draft. So they'll be streaming live. So he's like, "Yeah, I think we're going to be doing some podcast stuff." But it's like they say we need a better uh, oh, Ethernet. Also, he's the uh, he's the de facto mascot of the Las Vegas of the Golden, Golden Knights. Knights. Yeah. yeah. So he he was very interested in seeing how all this stuff went and since our production is so streamlined and there's no problems. <laughs> he was pretty impressed. <laughs> so thanks to Tommy Rocker once again. Yeah, it's a, a weird thing. Well, it's not weird, but uh, Vegas like all the they have a bar for every team because everyone's a transient. So there's a bar a you know, Bears bar and a Steelers bar and I'm sure Tommy Rocker was really happy with the fucking Dolphins season for business. <laughs> Suck shit. You gotta pick a team. Saints just lost in overtime. Patriots lost. Titans lost in overtime. All my teams suck. Did you have parlay or something? Yeah, I had a I, I had a I had a Titans Patriots parlay. You don't seem too upset, so Nah, fuck it. It's online. I bet I bet nothing. Uh, all right, so <laughs> first of all, Guy, the kid that you, they called your road manager, <laughs> your tour manager, that kid, uh, as I said, I'm, I'm just going to make someone stay while I'm up here. I'm just going to find some weird <laughs> weird fan and just – and right away, the Sunday before I was there watching football and that kid came up, hit where, me. Where, where, oh, we were at the sportsbook bar at the plaza. Yeah, and he came up and offered me acid. Well, hold on. Before that, he came up to me as I was rushed. We were drinking. We were pre-gaming before the Bretzels came in and Chad came in because you were staying at another place and the Bretzels were still on the road and I was fucking getting pretty lit and it was about six o'clock at night. And I'm going to the bathroom and the and guy, hippie kid, comes up and he's like just staring at me. He goes, hey, uh, 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 and I'm like... The, 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 t- the clock is ticking. I know how long it takes to get to the bathroom. I'm already starting to pre-pee, right? And I was like, hey, dude. Uh, he goes, uh, can you wait a minute? I go, no. And I just walked away. <laughs> and so then he just waited until I came back and settled in, and then we started talking. And that was that was when he well, came up to you. Yeah, yeah. He's, he was the hitchhiker kid from Fear and Loathing. <laughs> that kind of, he's that young and that timid, but he offered me acid. Uh, and I was already pickled. I was in the sports, but I was watching football. <laughs> By the way, I did not gamble at all in Vegas except for I bet two. I, I allowed myself sports book betting, so I bet two games. I was pretty sure on. I put uh, two hundred on the uh, 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 Cowboys and a hundred on the Eagles, and uh, and then immediately I won both games. But I lost the ticket, the hundred dollar yes. ticket. 
So I went, out. Oh, Did you ever sort that out? Because I saw Stan Hope three times the whole Vegas trip. One is where he woke up in the middle of the night and thought it was the next day and came down to the sports book to file that you'd lost your uh, ticket. Yeah. Stan Hope's there in his pajamas, hair all. <laughs> I guess you don't have any hair, but for some reason you look, you can Actually, tell no, that you. I did have hair. Is I that just, what it yeah, was? I I'll say it. for some reason you could tell that you were had just got like rolled out of bed and you're like, ah, I just woke up, thought it was too And there was a form that uh, you had to fill out yeah. with so many fucking questions that. Could, I mean, do yeah, you the, the badge number of the person I bought the ticket from? <laughs> so I that didn't work out. And they change shifts well, every forty you, minutes. You don't know if they're going to refund it for one hundred and twenty days. So oh, maybe okay. I get a check for a hundred okay. bucks. But either way, I I, I covered true. it with the other win, <sighs> and. Uh, I was proud of myself for not putting a fucking nickel in a slot machine or a video yeah. poker. Not, I did, however, when the kid came up and offered me acid, shaky little wispy fucking long haired. I did not dreaded, but it looked dreaded. It uh, looked like a unkempt, thick caveman yeah. wig. Yeah. It was like really long, and, and his hairline went down like, yeah, like all, almost all to his eyebrows. Eyebrow. I mean, it was, you, it was you beautiful hair. You couldn't get a brush through it, that's <laughs> no. for sure. <laughs> you couldn't get your fingers through it. Yeah. I said this Andy is tried. Yeah. And I, yeah. I just, a permanent grin. Yeah, I got I got him a, a cocktail, and then I, uh, I took him to Oscar's Steakhouse, and I think it would have been probably a $300 meal. <laughs> uh, uh, if we were, if they comped it out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that was the uh, dinner we were all going to go to. <laughs> yeah, get them filet mignon. <laughs> uh, stop by the roulette wheel. What's your number? So I did. I did <gasps> wager sixty bucks for him. Oh. You lose Three the bet. Different times. You lose the bet. No, no, no. no wait, hold on. I. You could have. Well, you could have not said I gave anything. Him the money uh, to gamble. It was part of his make a kids weekend uh, plan. Yeah. His, his comedy fantasy camp. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Listen, you couldn't have picked a better kid. When we sat down at Tommy Rockers, oh, we were still really hungover, and uh, so I sat down in the bar. She says, "What can I get?" I go, "Let me just get a water right now to start off with, and then once I finish my water, I'll start." And he's like, "Anybody else want a water?" And the kid goes, "Is it free?" <laughs> That's- you could not have picked a better kid to help out. He He's drove trying, all the way down. He lives outside of Reno in Gardnerville. I think it's a population of 1,200. Makes Bisbee look like a metropolis. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, he always a virgin, too. Yes. Uh, I got to throw that in there. Yeah. Uh, so I thought maybe I could work that out. Oh, fuck. I forgot about that story, too. Uh, I don't know how I left him, but I remember the next day uh, going, ah, fuck, I forgot all about that kid. Uh, but then when I ran into him, he'd already hooked up with Andy doing acid. <laughs> well, this this is the start of it. I, and that was, uh, I don't know if you caught the detail in the beginning. No, you did, because you corrected him. When he came up first to the, to the sports book, we were at the video pokers playing, and he goes, uh, do you want acid? I go, no, 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 no. Doug was sitting one seat down. I go, uh, yeah, yeah, we're, we're okay. And I go, oh, and I grabbed his arm. I go, hold on a second. And that's when Doug was like, what, what, what's going on here? And then it's I like. I think I told him, give everyone acid but Andy. <laughs> but I said, we do have friends, of which I didn't know who, but someone would, right? And then he goes, okay. And then, He's in between Doug and I, sitting at the video poker, pulls out a, a pack of extra gum and starts to pull out what is going to be tabs of acid. And Doug, Doug did that thing. That, Doug did that thing where like you're going to buy drinks, and Doug goes, "Put your money away." Like he did that. Thing, Put that away. <laughs> and he goes, "Want a drink?" And it's like, well, just guy. There's a there's an etiquette <laughs> in a place, especially crawling with cameras. It's to not broadcast, <laughs> you know, because because to to play that off, I'd have to unwrap that acid and chew it like extra gum, <laughs> or go to jail. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> so yeah, he evidently hooked up with you guys. Well, or- I thought so. We had heard that you had were doing a Make a Wish weekend, so he just immediately became an honorary member. And uh, he was uh, right across uh, the hall no. from us. Plus, Andy in, in the rooms, he was right there so next to us. So that worked out well. Andy could ping pong between uh, the, the us, Olivia, and Guy, <laughs> and by 
when I say ping pong, he'd run into our door. We wouldn't answer. It'd be barred. And then Olivia wouldn't answer. It'd be barred. So we'd have to go. So it's more like caroms <laughs> trying to get in that one basket. I was I was hole up the whole time, chain smoking and writing in that suite. Uh, so at least the kid uh, had a good time. And I opened the show. By introducing him, he was sitting front row center yes. too. Uh, Josh, yeah, uh, sorry, etiquette number two. Shaley, <laughs> Shaley talked to him about it. Well, I was going to have him backstage and bring him out, but th- by that time, I was just desperately trying to remember his set, much less fuck with him. But he was right there <laughs> yeah. in front of me. He was so. almost on stage, so. And I told his story. He's like, a kid works like at an AM, PM, broke his shit, never had a girlfriend. <laughs> I think he was what twenty two. Yeah, and. uh so I announced that he was a virgin, and if anyone could, I can take care of him for New Year's Eve. And uh, I, I had vague recollections of later that night seeing him with a some blonde girl that they were seeming to get along pretty good. Yep. She and, the one uh, in the leopard print. Yep. I can't even remember. Yep. I just remember there was. She was blonde. with. Them. She showed up with him with Tommy. Rock Tommy Rock. Yeah, that was the girl. Yeah. yeah. Oh, did she come? Yeah, I asked her if she did. She said I taught him to make out. <laughs> Well, that's close. Well, that's well, good. I go, we still got tonight, you know? He said they were in his room dry humping, basically. <laughs> He's trying to get to third base or, or something when Andy, of course, barges <laughs> in saying, sorry, I need a place to sleep tonight, oh. and fucking completely cock-blocked what could have been a closing situation. I, Andy ruins fucking everything. I, I, I tried to help drunk on the fucking plaza floor. I was bullshitting with those two. And then uh, I forget how charming I am. So I was trying to wingman him. And then she's like, uh, why don't why don't uh, we just let him watch us fuck? And I was like, oh, no, that was I wasn't going that direction. Goddamn, I'm good at this, though. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Immediately went and found my wife. Oh, but that brings me. I I want to say thanks, uh, uh, Stanhope, because uh, what you've always said is a hundred percent true. Uh, I got up on that stage at the plaza. Uh, Chad Shag opened it. He were going to play that at the end, Chaley. If you you have it recorded, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I got his I, set. I got, I'm gonna play yeah. his set at yeah, the end. Play Chad's <laughs> set at the end. You're gonna burn his only three jokes. <laughs> You didn't know they. You didn't know he had jokes. I sent him out last minute. But uh, I, I've gotten laid by my wife so much since that that uh, my dick hurts. I'm trying. I'm like, leave me alone for a little while. So thanks. Man. Even a train stop. Just out. hold on now. It worked out well for me. <laughs> Tell a story. The green room. You thought you're just doing an off stage announcement to open the show. Yeah. Shaley texted me and was like, you're "Going over here. You're doing." Uh, uh, announcements and I said off stage like last time and he says yeah exactly like last time and I was like all right so 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 we're all prepped in my head what I've got to do and Shaley brings me up to the to the green room and then he leaves and, and then, I was uh, going I was taking care of stuff out in front of house so I didn't know because I said hey Doug will want to talk to you about like final thing before you go on but as right. far as I know it's you're just going to do off stage announce which I had a wireless mic back there and everything set up and uh, I left. So I was bullshitting with Hannigan for a little while. We're sitting there, and then pretty soon Stanhope walks into the green room and immediately goes, you got an opening line for offstage announcements? (laughs) Don't keep your phone off? I don't know. What do you mean? Hello? Yeah. Welcome? Uh, Welcome to the (laughs) closet. So he was telling me that he's like, I got a, a, you know, I got one for you if you don't have one. And I was like, I'm... I don't understand. He's like, no, you're going to go up and intro the show. Sold out. I don't want to do that. I, said, I, well, I was so close to saying no. I wanted to say no. Even if I had, I had the things that I ended up saying, I already had in my head if, you know, that I, I could say. But then at that moment, they were gone. I look to Jenny and I go, oh, I got nothing. I don't want to do this. She's like, no, you can do it. You'll remember. And I'm like, I don't, I don't want to do it. So I was glad I did. Thanks. But when I when I got back up to the green room, like seven or eight minutes to show, because we we had a, a music track playing. So we're when it's the train leaves. When the train leaves, <laughs> there's we got to get down there. And uh, I go, Ch- uh, Chad, you work it out with Doug. He's like, Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you're like. 
tapping it into your phone. I'm going, what the fuck is he doing? He's playing cr- Candy Crush when he should be getting ready to- I'm trying to type shit to Jenny- say in my <laughs> phone so I can remember it or at least look at my phone if I don't remember and it. And Jenny's all, I'll make sure he does it. I go, what the fuck is wrong with Chad? This fucking he's pussy can't even fucking remember. I think he's yeah. gonna. I think yeah. he's gonna go. Hey everyone! You've well, happy before, New Year's, asshole. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah uh, put those phones away. We're yeah. gonna have a great time tonight. Are yeah. we ready to rock and roll the New Year? <laughs> I think something like that. He's typing it down. Like he's gonna fucking forget to say, "Don't take pictures or video." I go, "What the fuck is wrong with him?" I go, "Hey, we got." He goes, "One more minute, Shaylee." Like, he's rehearsing lines that he can read off stage. What is the fucking problem here? Shit, so was frustrated. I get everyone to go downstairs. I still don't know. And I get downstairs, and then it's told to me that he's gonna go on stage, and then I go back in the showroom sitting at our table back there and he has a fucking set I'm like oh my god no one is shit in his pants I fucking had no idea I'm so fucking like dude act like you've been here before for oh, Christ's man. sake yeah, I thought I did but I mean yeah you did a great job you did a great job you tight killed. five man yeah it's you fucking killed great. Olivia killed I was just fucking I, it just felt mediocre to me it just it felt flatlined. I woke up the next day going, did I even do the punchline to that bit? Did I even do that bit? I, it just, it was completely autopilot. My fucking head was a wreck. I didn't feel it. It was fun. It was the first time I had seen any of that stuff. So I had a good time. I laughed. I mean, it was a good show to me. So I forget that because I've just seen you yeah. do it for Yeah, the last time weeks. I saw you was at the plaza, so when you did your oh, yeah. special. So I hadn't seen anything. Erickson's too. They hadn't seen any of that. So, yeah, yeah. we were back there. Crack, you're cracking us up. I real laughs. laughs. Yeah. Doug was getting real laughs yeah. from his friends. <laughs> yeah, someone tweeted a, a picture of me on stage from a distance, and it said, this is right... Uh, Right after the woman behind me started vomiting everywhere. Fifth row, oh, yeah, stage right. That. Yeah. Oh, did I know it? No, I, I keep those things from you. <laughs> <laughs> the lady came up in the beginning and said, uh, "Hey, this lady just won't shut up behind me." And uh, and uh, I go, "What do you want to do?" And I go, "Where is she?" She goes, "I can't. It's down there." And I go, "Look, there's a table back here. It's in the back, but it's a booth. It's all for you and and your 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 friend." Come up, well, we got here early. I go, this is the fucking problem. The people who get here who really want to see you are here early. Like the people who line up early yeah, and are drinking the whole time. People lined up at 4.30. 4.30 in the afternoon. For a 6.30 for, doors. Yeah. For an 8 o'clock show. Right, that yeah. guy emailed me. Oh, uh, by the way, Shannon, if you're listening, you uh, we're gonna. Uh, I'm going to talk uh, to you on the uh, Patreon podcast that we're going to tape shortly after this. Fan appreciation podcast. I get a very touching email and uh so yeah uh shannon stay tuned if you're if you're not patreon i'll send you a dollar (laughs) (laughs) but you're gonna refund her (laughs) i'm gonna read that email on the she can listen to one month so Uh, but i get an email from the guy that was the first guy at 4 30 i think he's like a doctor or something if you're listening to the podcast he said if you're ever in san diego we'd love to have you for dinner and drinks and I, I don't know that that's going to... I'm not m- much of a dinner guy, but uh, I appreciate you uh, putting in that time. Does he run uh, a conveyor really? belt sushi? He <laughs> said it's I, open at 4 o'clock in the afternoon? Because he, he'll, he'll be there <laughs> near the club. <laughs> we must have tweeted that people were there at 4.30 because he said, uh, I, I saw that. He somehow, oh no, I said it on stage. Mm-hmm. No. And he said, I was the, the one, my wife and I, and I... I Figured if I went to the Louvre, I would plan to spend quite a bit of time. And he, yeah, he compared me to the Louvre, even though he misspelled it. (laughs) A doctor. (laughs) I think he's a doctor. I don't know why I think that. So, listen, just to finish, the lady never came up to get the seat. And then we're not even 10 minutes from the end of the show. And the lady comes up again and goes, Now she's thrown up all over the place. So I got my little light. I Let's wish go. people could see your eye roll <laughs> on that. He, I was sitting right there. It's exactly accurate. That's I, what happened. I grab my light and I go, "Let's go." And we we head down there. And sure enough, man, she's she's head down, and the boyfriend is like rubbing her back thing. I don't know what. Yeah. I, it feels good, but it usually it happens when you're on the toilet and you're <laughs> feeling the cold porcelain. That's kind of a, in a room full of you know four or five hundred people. Where you just vomited on the back of someone's seat, 
get up and leave. Yeah. Yeah, drag her out of there. Yeah. But if it's he your was just, girlfriend, help her out. And they, her back. they never did anything. It was the cu- couple in front that came up. And then I look, and there's people like everyone around there is just like, oh, this is, you know, we didn't know it was going to go this bad because yeah. they thought they were just going to get kicked out. And she, because she was heckling too and stuff. But it wasn't that. Well, if you're that drunk, you're going to puke. You're probably going to be a little chatty right yeah, beforehand. Yeah. So <laughs> I get there and I was like, I'm not touching shit, right? But I'm like, yeah, I just want to kind of get the, the, uh, once again, I should have took a picture. I didn't. <laughs> so, uh, I go up and I go, hey, you you got to get security down there. We need to get this, you know, cleaned up. At least the show's about to end. People are gonna be walking through this, <laughs> just disgusting. <laughs> and the, the security gal's like, I, I ain't touching this. Uh, and we go out to this. I get her out to go out to the side, and as they start to head towards the side, I just go there and it's like kind of kick the pile. And, oh. There was a pile, and then there was like a hazmat bag. But I think the hazmat bag you was just, just polished those shoes. <laughs> I know oh. <laughs> they didn't fit, so I knew I was getting rid of them. So. I just kind of shoved it like the bag was on top of it, and I don't know if there was something in the bag, but it all kind of moved, and it just got underneath, and that's when I turned to the person to the side. This is a really nice-looking couple (laughs) with this horrific look because they know what I've just done and what they have to walk through. So I was just like, eh. And then we go out, and they wanted to go all the way around the back of the stage by the service bar and everything. And I'm like, no, we're going this is closest this way. Well, I didn't realize I took him to the back row, and that whole back row on stage right was all plaza VIPs <laughs> <laughs> and upper brass. <laughs> March the puke girl. She's past like, everybody. she's like, no, we can't go that way. I go, we're going this way. That's the quickest way out of here. I'm not going to babysit this, you know, puke train. And so we get up there, and I'm having to like push like chairs back out of the way because everyone's all spread out because they work there, right? Yeah, was, uh, and then we had to go through the red curtain to get out, and I'm like, oh, maybe we should have gone the long way. <laughs> we just <laughs> marched through <laughs> like like an upper-level staff meeting. Yeah, it's pretty funny. And then I go, look, now you deal with her out here, but don't you have any contingency for this? Because she's too drunk to be in a place that serves liquor, clearly. Yeah. Now what? And well, they're like, uh, but not well, the she can, she can yeah. get out. <laughs> it's the plaza. Get there was, the table. There was homeless Security. people taking refuge in there. They weren't even asking them <laughs> to leave. They just made sure she was out, out of the way. <laughs> walk, that, walk that lady directly to craps. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Roulette. Move slower. Craps is too Put bad. a feed bag on her, an empty feed bag in case she ralphs again. But get, get her ATM card moving. <laughs> <laughs> the janitors came in with that sawdust stuff that you remember from school. Yeah. Gonna, bring them over here. They park her up next to her. <laughs> they sawdust the floor uh, around her. <laughs> Preventative that's measures. why that, I have not done a New Year's Eve show since maybe 2002. Oh, and that's why. Because they're fucking, the audience is uh, 2002. No, 20 minutes. Oh, it's worth the 20 minute mark. Yeah, yeah. There's, a, there's a reason for that. Even though the money's good. It's usually not worth the hassle. That wasn't, I mean, that was an isolated incident for 450 people. It wasn't like comedy clubs where, you know, in the days where they just went to comedy to have a place to go and then fucking they're outrageous. And it didn't have to do the countdown shit either. It was was early end, yeah. Yeah, it was an 8 to 10. We will not be doing a countdown. (laughs) 8 to 10 only. (laughs) So the... the, (laughs) It, it is one of those things I was explaining to Fred today, back at the Funhouse before we left, that uh, New Year's Eve is second only to Halloween for the worst day to do yeah, comedy. Ha- ha- yeah, Halloween's the worst. But that was pretty plug and play. I mean, as far I mean, you've been there often enough that we kind of know what to expect. They know what to expect from us. And the other thing is, is that the uh, the staff there, they. There's no, it's not like hustling and all this. They're just on autopilot. Yeah, gonna... and uh, Gary, the manager, always takes care of us. He even sent me one of those giant pictures they have in the rooms of old Vegas, black and white. Yeah, you know, the o- old Union Plaza when it was called that. We're trying to judge what year it's from by the cars in the parking lot in the picture. Yeah, they they uh, they hooked us up. I was. I remembered uh, Omar from the last time, and I was all proud of myself and told Stanhope, and then Stanhope went and told on me. <laughs> Chadwick was proud of himself because he remembered your name. Omar, God damn you! You're uh, supposed to tell Omar that. I didn't remember his name until you told me. I'm uh, sure I told him I that, that too. Was, I think that was why you told yeah, him. Yeah, so he could be super honest about himself yeah, by, yeah, by yeah. throwing yeah. you under the, under the bus. Too. Now, Omar was great because he's like the <laughs> stage manager. 
or the uh, the room manager, and I kept like texting him, and he's like, "Oh, be right there," and he's like, "Right there." I go, "What the fuck?" I, he's in the audience. <laughs> he, he went to the show. <laughs> All right, let's refresh these cocktails. Back in a moment. Yeah, cheers, everybody. Yeah. That's some enthusiasm uh, right there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah what happened to the opening the crowd? Sort of enthusiasm we, we swapped expect. the crowd. I mean, this is the end, beginning of the last century that any of us are ever going to be able to breathe. Come on, <laughs> have some fun. Use your lungs now. You know, hey, and get as much salmon in you as you can, because they're filling up with plastic, and they're going to be a little different to cook. <laughs> you know, you won't be able to barbecue them anymore. Uh, you can microwave them. Yeah, because you can't burn plastic. <laughs> you can. They're just going to smoke more. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll get used to it. You know, some of us will survive. You know, not men. Not. I'm not. I'm not. Not us. Yeah. No, not us. Because uh, we're nobody up here. Because we're, you know, we're doing a podcast, so we've been given the code to the. Uh, <laughs> Exit p- shuttles because <laughs> they're going to need podcasting in the future for, for the elites that escape, you know. And then we'll go to a new planet and it'll be all the rich guys and all the podcasters. And then we'll, we'll be like, no, you guys can't fuck kids. And they'll be like, okay, you guys are out. <laughs> That's the future I saw last night on LSD. <laughs> hey, everybody, it's me, Brett Erickson from the Issues with Andy podcast. Uh, we love you, Killer Termites, and we hope you'll tune in and uh, check us every Friday. Issues with Andy on uh, YouTube. Uh, yeah, look, it's it's a it's not a podcast, right? Isn't it a vod vodcast? You're right. For once, Andy, you're right. It's a vodcast, <laughs> which means uh-huh. it's a podcast it. fueled by vodka. <laughs> oh, oh, oh shit. I was drinking cola. I fucked up. (laughs) And the V could also stand for video because it's a video podcast. That's it. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. As always, I'm right, and Chad Shank is writer. (laughs) 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 Or more right, to be correctly incorrect or something. If you love the shit you're getting here on the Doug Stanhope podcast, get more shit. With us on Issues with Andy on YouTube every Friday. And yeah, we'll, you keep listening and watching or however you do it, and we'll keep shitting. <laughs> <laughs> we'll keep shitting, con- I mean, shitting content. And not shit. That's what we'll, we do. We'll, pol- we'll polish it up and call it a turd. <laughs> and you can shit on it if you hate it and love it. Yeah, thanks for watching and, and shit. <laughs> All right, thanks, guys. What date do you think I should fly here? The microphone, Andy. Use the microphone. <laughs> Which date do you think I should play? We're right. back. We're back. Uh, okay, so, Chad. Yes, sir. We were all staying at the plaza. Oh. Chad found a deal. <laughs> uh... I don't yeah. know if we, we, we might have already I, talked about this happening. I think, I, I, think I mentioned it on the podcast that this was going to happen. But, uh, yeah, I, uh, uh, whenever we looked at the plaza, it was like 300 and something bucks a night by the time we had finally decided that this we were going to be able to go. This is a place that you probably get for $9 a night in the summer. It was, I think it was 29 uh, starting on the 1st. <laughs> you could stay there for 29 but leading up to it and the night of New Year's Eve was like 300 and something bucks. Oh, and it was expensive when I recorded there because it was Memorial Day weekend. Yeah. Right, yes. Uh, so we uh, uh, did a timeshare <laughs> uh, presentation now, uh, did you, for our stay. Uh, how did you find that? Did they find you? That's okay. So they, I was booking a room at the uh, Holiday Inn on the phone, and after I booked my room, he goes, uh, "You're an IHG Rewards member," and he says, "So uh, you qualify for a special deal? Do you want to hear about it?" And I, yeah, I'll hear about it, and uh, and it turned out to be this. I, what I told the guy on the phone when he gave me the the timeshare, you know, sales pitch thing, I go, if. If I got this as a cold call, I would have hung up on you already. But I called Holiday Inn. So, I mean, this has to be somewhat legit. And his whole pitch was, he says, we're just doing this for word of mouth. We want people, you know, we want you to go see what we have to offer. And then maybe you'll tell other people. And I said, you have no idea what you're asking for because if this sucks, it's going to be great for me. Although it's going to cost me $250. I'm going to have the best story ever. 
And uh, if not, I get a free stay in Las Vegas over New Year's Eve. And uh, it turned out to be not bad at all. Really? Yeah. No, I didn't. Listen, if I, I guess if Holiday uh, Inn has their name attached to it, they can't be too pushy. Well, and I didn't. Wait, know. Holiday Inn has their name attached to Holiday Inn sometimes, it's, and that's not too impressive. It's, it's, <laughs> it, it, here's the thing: is if I had, if I were a different person, if I, <laughs> if let's say I were like Hennigan, who travels a lot, and I probably I don't know how much money Hennigan has, but I'm assuming he could afford a fucking deal like this. You. Basically, I know how much money he has because I know he only works for me. You <laughs> so basically, just, somebody who has, all right, maybe not hitting it, but I, the only person I know travels like a lot for pleasure and goes all no, I think I think that stands. So, um, Hennigan's uh, picky yeah, and yeah. he can afford. Well, uh, it doesn't work like the way timeshares used to work. Basically, what you do is you get uh, 200,000 IHG reward points every year on the first of the year, and then you can use them wherever you want at these different resort oh, packages um so there's you use no, your credits yeah yeah you just basically are prepaying for 20 years worth of fucking travel credits and paying doled out at two hundred thousand. Hey, dollars on the holiday dollar. inn he showed me a picture of the place you were staying that wasn't a fucking holiday inn was it oh uh, yeah yeah that wasn't even the resort well, that was, was the that was the stage yes. holiday inn. no 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 <laughs> listen they have the 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 timeshare they were trying to sell me, that's where I had to go across the street and attend the seminar. Right. That place was, it's like apartments. Yeah. It's, and they've got. Yeah, it's very nice. And they've got pools every, you know, couple of feet. And they've got all these amenities. And it's very swanky. The where we stayed, because it was New Year's Eve and we pl- uh, planted at the last minute, we stayed at the Holiday Inn Tuscany Casino. Uh, 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 right, a little ways down. Was it on the, the road. strip? Uh, did you have to go no, to Henderson? Uh, no, no, it was uh, uh, on Flamingo, right up by the link, right up from the link. All right. Uh, so just enough off the strip. The that link, I could... which is a Caesar's property. Uh, yeah. <laughs> there was Fuck a the few link. of them over there. Doug's not even allowed to say Caesar's property. <laughs> <laughs> He's not even allowed to eat a Caesar salad. <laughs> 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 Go ahead um, and gloat over that joke, he, and then he is, he is allowed to have a Caesar's many, haircut. <laughs> <laughs> then, <laughs> if he could grow hair. <laughs> oh my gosh! So anyway, we attended. It was just real cliche, though. The sales thing was the guy. You know how they do the the sales thing where they get you to say yes and get you to agree with them. He was so desperate that he was like, "Who here would agree that uh, twenty is more than two? <laughs> who, who here's going to get out? I was like, dude, that's fucking sad, man. I could do move over. Let maybe they're trying the to find out the share. <laughs> maybe they're trying to find the people ridiculous. who can't add, and then oh. they move them up. <laughs> dude, it was it would uh, nobody would respond to him. Like he's hmm, nobody, nobody, no, who nobody likes to travel. Like he's trying <laughs> to get people. To, and uh, but is everyone hung over in there? You like girls, was right? Poor, like me. We're just trying to get them to stay in a free fucking hotel. Actually, I saw several long forms come out during the hard sure. sell at the end. Bunch of people bought stolen them. credit cards. So, uh, fuck it, whatever works. But were you? How did you, you get over? out? What were was you hungover? Uh, <laughs> I said. <laughs> I, I, I said. You were uh, saying something earlier about. I know. I got pictures with me and Stan up and Joe Rogan. Oh, that was on the Andy yeah, podcast. Yeah. Well, that and that was when the dude tried to get like all personal later on because he was because uh, he asked me what we were doing in town. I told him we were here to watch my friend do you know a comedy show, and they're like, oh, who's that? You know, and I told him, and then so he was he's showing me pictures. So I started showing him pictures, and we, he was he already knew that I was not a sale at that point. I was just, we were just bullshitting. Um. But then the manager had to come over and give you the hard sell. And I said, look, I said, I wouldn't be in a position to even consider this if I wasn't a good businessman. And what kind of good businessman is going to make that sort of a financial decision based on a two-hour seminar? I says, I'm not going uh, to tell you yes right now. I says, I may say, I'm not, I, I like your deal. I like your presentation, but I don't like the pressure of having to say yes right now. I said, so... And she goes, well, you only get these today. I said, I understand scarcity marketing as well. Oh! I said, you know, uh, you know. I said, you're not going to change my mind. And I says, if I don't get a follow up call 
from you guys yeah. to try to do this that offers me these same deals? It's You're the shittiest salespeople I've ever met. I said, so don't try to tell me I have to do this right now <laughs> because I'm, and she, thank you, got up and all pissed off and left. So the, it was fun. Did you get a follow-up call yet? No, they're not going to no, call No, no, they red flagged They probably right ran there. my credit. <laughs> <laughs> I, they didn't know who I was until I went in there. They, so Face uh, recognition. Whenever they... Uh, <laughs> The guy was trying to do the sales thing, and he tried to uh, like appeal to everybody's emotions. And he says, "This is how important travel is." He, he reminded me of Alex Jones because he was like all animated, bald, big guy. He says, "This is how important travel is." Uh, I was out with my wife. We we're on a, 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 a one of our beautiful estates that we get to go to every year because we've been time shareholders since 1973. This and, this is the part in the ad copy. If this was our like uh, spot to read, yeah. they'd go make a personal, make the product personal. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Just, Encourage and, uh, personal stories. Yeah. Just, but but uh, remember that nobody would respond to him when he would offer these ridiculous fucking softball questions. Simple for math. People to do. Yeah, they were. Like, gonna... Everybody would just sit there. <laughs> And, uh, um, oh, fuck, no, I forgot. Alex Jones. Okay, so he says, uh, we're talking to some folks that we met there at the bar, and I said, you know, what made you come on this vacation? And he says, well, let me tell you, he says, uh, I've had three friends in the last six months that have uh, dropped dead, and they were all under 60 years old. And he says, uh, you know, you guys know what they all had in common? And everybody was dead quiet. And I go, they were all fat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you told me to go funny. I said, should I be a dick or should I be funny? And, you, and that was the only opportunity I had to be funny. So, uh, Did you get a laugh? No, from Jenny. <laughs> everybody else just thought I was a fucking dick. So, uh, yeah. So I did not accept the uh, timeshare offer in the end. But I still got to stay in a really nice room for absolutely free. No, I think it was uh, uh, sixty bucks. I Probably had to pay, pay taxes. I had to pay the taxes on the room, which is uh, like twenty bucks. Room room so charge or 60, something. Sixty bucks. City I paid room charge for. Yeah, that's uh, hell of a deal. That's. Probably the reason that uh, I'm not allowed on any Caesars <laughs> property is when they offered me a free vacation, <laughs> and after two hours on the fucking phone. <laughs> hey, wait! Why did the why did the the, the friends die. I think they were all workaholics. Was oh. uh, what it was. Yes, yeah, so they worked too hard. I yes. thought they were uh, just everybody. They were all fat. They didn't. They didn't travel. <laughs> that, that, that was gonna be something like that. that. Was, well, and that was it. They were all workaholics, and they didn't take the time to enjoy what really matters. So, so in someone life. gets someone was, figures uh, out this whole like uh, like uh, SVU munches like you know what, it's it's no travel time. That's what killed them all. Yeah, <laughs> like you put that on the death certificate. It's, it, it was <laughs> no a, vacation. A super timeshare would have figured the, this whole thing out. I, the, one of the hardest parts not to laugh is whenever the guy was trying to. The, here was the sales pitch inside when they walk you through the the thing. They all made fun of. There was fake a fake flight of beer with like rubber foam beer inside the glass, and there was a fake pizza. And I watched salesperson after sale. We're all in there at the same time, just filtering in. Oh, we got some pizza over here if you want pizza. Oh, we got some beer, and if you can drink it, you can have it. I'm watching them all make the same fucking... I'm like, is that in the script? You guys knock it off. But then we went in the kitchen, and the guy literally goes, over here, we got a, a laundry, and every every one of the, the places has a, a full Oh, there's laundry. a furnished model. Yeah, yeah, yeah they're yeah. walking us through a furnished model. Yeah, thanks, Shaley. And he's like, we have a full uh, laundry over here, you know, because whenever you go, you might want to wash your clothes, like explaining to us what the washer and dryer were for. And then he walked to the kitchen and goes, you got a stove? You go, you buy your own food. People spend so much money eating out when they travel, but here, you can eat your own food, then Whenever you're done, you have leftovers. Come over here. You can put them in the refrigerator. <laughs> After that, you can take them out of the refrigerator, put them in the microwave, wow. warm them back up, explaining <laughs> fucking Kitchen of the future. Yeah. How? We got 50s come like out. 1950s work. World's Fair event. Holy Jesus. shit. Wait, you mean we could make food and then just not just throw it in the fucking yard? You want to talk, the- talk to some people at home? There's a thing here called the telephone. <laughs> you just li- get this. You dial a number, uh, and you can talk to them directly. You know you, how you have two twin beds at home? This is like two <laughs> twin beds put together. You can sleep and actually touch each we other. We call it Look at this. A it's full. one sheet. It's a one whole sheet. covers both twin beds. How do we get the two sh- twin sheets on a full? <laughs> do you have a sewing machine? 
<laughs> for the record, uh, uh, furnished model is not nearly as good as scarcity marketing. Yeah, no, that's great. <laughs> that's a fucking strong pull, son. <laughs> you can use that a lot, too, because that's very it common. Fun. It yeah. was fun. But And you get to stay away from the crowd, which... Like the few times I'd ventured down to the casino floor, I forget people can entertain themselves in Vegas. Yeah. They don't need me. And I remember one time going to the food quarters, of course, you have to walk through the entire casino. Uh, and I, I passed yeah. separately Tracy and Mitchell, both on slot machines. And I go, you know, hi, kiss them on the head and winning anything. And they're just like, yeah, uh, all good. And like staring right at the machine. They don't need me. <laughs> Mitchell won uh, $700 last time on penny slots. So this time, she was sure it was just a matter of time until she hit that other 700 yeah. I go, you're going to chase that dragon forever. Just stop. Because that was just, that was just, you don't even know how dollar or the penny slots work. You just hit yeah, and the it's same not a thing penny. over. It's, oh, it's that's what I cracked up. It's a dollar. It's a dollar, yeah. At it's least. It's Sometimes slots. it's more. Yeah, but you bet. All of them. Yeah, so you have to bet all of them to yeah. win the jackpot. Well, you need all the 700 pass. lines that go across and yes. zigzag and oh, shit. Yeah. yeah, she was pretty uh, dejected when she didn't win this time. Oh, yeah. yeah, The crowds were definitely more so than the other times that I've been there for New Year's Eve. It, I had one after we went from the dive bar and we went back to the plaza to drink for a oh, while. Oh, my God. Yeah. I, had a, I did have a, a, a little bit of a breakdown incident uh, where I got... I think how I put it to Jenny because she's like because she tries to judge me. This is before started, the show or after the show? This uh, is at, after the this show. This is on the thirtieth after the dive right. bar. After we did the, the issues oh, yeah, of the yeah. dry run at the dive bar. Yeah. So uh, I uh, <laughs> Jenny tries to gauge, you know, how I am. I'm grunting and I'm fucking fuck moving, you know. And she's like, you know, and then I go, and so I explain, I said, I want to put my foot in somebody's mouth. I want to put my fingers up their nose, and I want to fucking rip their face in half. And she's like, "Oh, that's a bad one. Like, that's not, that's not good. I've not even heard that one. Did you just make that up?" I'm like, "Yeah, that's new for she's me so too." So sweet. And so she's like, "Go outside and smoke." And so, what, the, what was the situation? You're just there, nothing specific. That's the most frustrating thing about this, Daniel. If I could say, here's what happened, I can tell you specific things that that pissed me off before. Uh, like there while I was there like whenever I'm in a big line to get pizza and the people in front of me have made friends and then when it's their turn to order pizza they still have their back turned and yeah. they're just talking to their new friends and I'm like order pizza motherfucker <laughs> they but built I know, I know built. why I'm mad just, right that then. sounds insignificant but yeah. as those things yeah. mount that I'm I, I can be mad at that but I know why I'm mad and that one's easier than just I can't handle the I get claustrophobic it's but it's like you're claustrophobic inside your skin but i feel like i can i can bust out of that skin and just tear people's face in half and i feel better so jenny says go outside and smoke so i thought yeah i'll go stand outside and smoke and then when somebody harasses me for smoking weed outside i'll do the fucking foot <laughs> finger nose thing see how that works finger out. Nose thing. so i went outside and i was smoking and uh Nobody harassed me because nobody ever does. So I smoking weed out there, and two dudes come walking out, and one of them goes, uh, "Well, that smells good." And uh, I was like, "Got plenty if you'd like a hit, sir." And these two dudes walk over, and I realize weed is legal in Nevada. Yes, yeah, we, and uh, so, it's still not legal to smoke on the street. Not smoking on Main Street in front well, of the plaza. It's it was, not, but it was in the corner I, of an area yeah, where there baby was baby steps. Hardly I get it. anything, and it's all about your attitude. Where Andy was pissing. If you're not throwing up or pissing, you're probably not going to bother you. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, just, just side note, people, you get to watch it. Watch episode 21 of Issues with Andy live from Tommy Rockers, <laughs> and that'll get you hooked because Andy never runs out of stories. I can't plug it hard enough even though i'm jealous <laughs> so uh these two gentlemen come over there and smoke weed with me and as they get closer to come over and smoke weed with me and i go to hand the guy the joint and i have to go reach upward because the one guy is probably seven foot two and his son who's with him is probably about six ten <laughs> and I've smoked a couple, you know, a couple weeks with them. We bullshit a little bit. Tell me a little bit about who they are. And he's my son. We're here having a good time, and we're going down there. And I, tell, you know, and I tell them a little bit about me. Only that uh, I'm so grateful that you guys came out here and smoked weed with me because sometimes whenever you're just irrationally ready to rip somebody's face in half, 
what you really need is two ice giants to fucking walk up and stand next to you so that you can just be like, hey, maybe um, I might get my face ripped in half, so just be cool, motherfucker. Ice so, giants. So, I gotta start smoking weed so, so I can have these references in the book. I was gonna go with Ming Yao, but I didn't even know if that was the guy's name. Yao Ming. Yao Ming. Ice giants. Ice giants are the guys way better. Battle. What? Ice giants are the guys that Thor battled, I think, in like old. Uh, oh. Well, you'd watch more comic book movies if you smoke weed, Doug. So that would. It would <laughs> no, I knew yeah. that. I knew that and from a help. fucking book, motherfucker. I haven't even watched very many comic book movies. I don't like them. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so those guys Scorsese. were those guys were very uh, very cool and it helped me a lot and uh, changed my whole headspace and we bullshitted. So the next night is your show and as we coming out of down the stairs from out the front doors of the plaza, those two guys are the first guys that I saw. They were only there for your show. Oh, cool. <laughs> I asked my son, guys if, without dates, and Doug Stanhope. I come walking in. They're of. like. It's Chad. That's who smoked weed with you yesterday. They were all happy. Cause oh, because like, you opened the show. Yeah. And yeah. so then they, were, you know, they saw me on the stage, and he was like, "We didn't even know." And I go, I, "You know, it's cool. We just met <laughs> randomly, and you guys." They knew who you were from the podcast, but didn't know it was you. Yes. Yeah. That, <laughs> that's well, that's great. what they said uh, later. But they definitely knew who I was after they saw me on stage <laughs> before your show. But he said, "Yeah." He asked his son who his favorite comedian was, and he told him, and he looked it up and found that show and took him to that show because uh, her. Uh, trying to hang out now in the in the, her uh, older ages yeah yeah I I, I I did hang out and try to meet people after the show even though there's no merch booth and tell no, you pictures. did you were a trooper no. I got a little out of hand <laughs> Ye- yelling at that one couple oh the pukers no <laughs> we had a huge line it was nice to, to the pukers yeah, yeah, I just got him out of there. There was a huge line to get uh, to do like a meet and greet after, and you were right, right at the steps underneath the twenty twenty balloons, and we had it was you and Bingo, and they were, everyone was in line, and I had security, you know, kind of thin out the line so it's straight back, so we don't have this this thing people come in in the side. I had Chad on one side, and Tracy's on the other, just kind of keeping people in that line. But anyone who was like fumbling with their phone or like standing there without their phone, I go. Go. You can't. No, you're not next. Said, but I'm like That's trying right, to I remember going that. really fast. And then this one it's guy. It's on selfie. He's goes, yelling. It. Look, I don't know your code. Back yeah. in the line. Back in the line. So yeah, then I do have to tone Jaylee down. This well, is why people think Jaylee hates I could see them. your face. Ew. And I'm like, just if we if we really all cooperate here, we can get through this. Because Doug at some point is going to go, I'm done. And what can I do? Yeah. Tackle him and handcuff him to the fucking rail? So I go, let's just do it. We can do this. Everyone, come on. Just get your phone. Put it on. I know you're not going to listen to me, but I'm going to say put it on flash. And then, well, he doesn't need it. All right. Well, don't go back in line because you fucking. So these two get like sit right. You guys at one point just sat on the steps. I go, oh, it's perfect. Now they'll get around you. You can mug behind him and whatever. And there's two people sat down around you. And just sat there. Didn't hand me a phone or anything. I go, what the fuck you want me to do? Draw your picture? Give me a fucking phone. <laughs> and they're staring at me. I go, one of you's got to have a camera or get out of the line. That's one thing I'm, I'm, I'm aware of. No matter how stressed out I am putting a set together before a show, Chaley is ten times more stressed. And he wasn't even working it. You're here for... Uh. But you're always working. God, yeah. I'm learning something as we speak. So uh, what I should have done when I went up there's intro is explain to everybody, after we're done here, you're going to get to take a picture with Doug Stano. But consider him like a wild animal that you've come <laughs> upon in the in the, in the the forest. You're, you're going to get a few pictures, but eventually he's going to get spooked and run back to his fucking burrow. So hurry up. Get your fucking picture. <laughs> well, I didn't know he was going to do that. I was a, I was a surprise. Yeah, yeah. That's why I was glad security was there. Yeah, yeah well, it worked it went out good. Smooth. Well, I did see. Uh, I, his name was Lamb Chops to me because he had these big lamb chops. I did see him the next night after Tommy Rockers when he spilled an entire shot of Jameson all over my arm. So he was uh, apologetic then too. But I felt bad because I realized who it was. I go, yeah, I did. That was a lot I had the other night. Did you do any uh, disco dancing? I do vaguely remember seeing that same band playing. No, there was a different band each night. Well, uh, New Year's Eve. I, I, yeah, yeah, those guys were great. Those were Wasn't yeah, that yeah. the same band that I, we were dude, dancing? You can buy those Afro wigs well, Because they seem to recognize me. Oh, from the last from, time we were Yeah, well, it was James. I danced like a James motherfucker that night. Yeah. I must have been on drugs or something. 
Yeah, they maybe they were all into Andy, and they were uh, drunk because I was on drugs, and I think you weren't. They were shouting out the uh, yeah. This was a drug free trip. Thanks a lot, Vegas. Not without effort. Damn. (laughs) He tried. (laughs) Fuck me. Yeah, well, I I can't wait to hear your set. We're playing it at the end, (laughs) but I do remember (laughs) you saying something about coke, and someone in the audience going, "I got some," and you go, "I'll hook up with you later." (laughs) Yeah. I never asked you if you did because I probably never saw no, you. No, no, nothing, not a thing. I got a little bit of that's uh, fun hallucinogenic uh, uh, strips of some stuff that I'm looking forward to doing. So thanks for that. Oh, oh, did you, do we want to have one more uh, story uh, about Las Vegas? Is Stephen oh, was Stephen? Oh, yes. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yes. You can do because. Oh, said, yeah, by the look on your cup. face, absolutely. Yeah. And I remember. I, I missed have, everything. No, I, wrote, I have to, I I have to do three, my own podcast points. to find out what the fuck, the fun you guys had that I was <laughs> in chambers for. We were, at, we were at the disco dancing bar. Uh, there was a band playing. We were Wait, all, which night was this? This was the, the Omaha bar. Tommy Rockers, whenever we were So it was all, uh, on the January 1st after the uh, Issues with Andy and it was a, uh, live podcast and at Tommy Rockers. there was a Rockers. full crew uh, there at that bar. Hennigan was there, uh, uh, Tracy Mitchell- uh, Erickson, Shaley, uh, Guy, Andy, Jenny was there. We had a whole, everybody was there. Well, some random guy started buying us all. Lamb chops. Shots. That was of, lamb chops. Was it? That was him. Okay. He started <laughs> buying us all shots of Jameson, which tastes exactly like cough medicine, I realized after my third <laughs> shot of Jameson, and then I still did two more, I think. <laughs> um, he he must have bought. Them. He must have bought six rounds he of Jameson. just kept bringing them. Well, we were all sitting at one of those little round uh, high top tables, and all, all of a sudden, Andy just starts puking into his little plastic plaza cup. He's making no effort to move. Oh, wait, you were drinking what? Uh, no, no, he was drinking rum. Oh yeah, he was getting he was giving Andy he, shots of rum. Rum. Oh. Yes. And everyone else is drinking Jameson. And at the after at the first. Instance where he poured the Jameson on my hand by accident. I go, look, I'm out. I, I go, I'm gonna go get pizza for the table. I'll bring it back here. We'll we'll get everyone's a little bit of food. We'll be fine. That guy kept buying shots, and he was buying Andy rum. And when I came back, there was a commotion, and Andy had knocked down one person, <laughs> had knocked down three high top I chairs. About that. <laughs> and I looked over and I go, who fucking, who did the 710 split? They just fucking, dude, Andy's chairs, out. there were chairs on the other side of the dance floor I had to go he, get he to bring like, back. Like a Domino's thing where they just barely hit the other one. <laughs> I forgot what the about fin- that. And Andy sprawled in the middle of it. Oh, so then I'm like, oh, I just turn my back and I go, whatever. And then that's when this whole thing that, happened. That's right. That was whenever Andy came over we were around that little circle and then Andy just blah, puking and the whole of us ran over to the other table to me uh, where, where I had the was. food because we were getting away from Andy puking into his cup you and Bud came over and then told me what happened and then Andy came over with his Andy cup Andy followed us with his cup and set his cup down in that that thing like when uh, when you like you bring like fajitas through a room <laughs> And the, and like everyone in the room, all of a sudden goes. I hear him. I smell him. I just don't see him. That's Andy's cup, and he plops it right down in front of me. I went, oh, <laughs> everybody. He, he I go, Andy, followed, we all that. left him at that little table with his cup by himself, and that motherfucker followed us to the full table where we no, no. Get this. He's still just puking in the cup. The guy doesn't take the hint. He brings him two more shots of rum. <laughs> But he brought him two more extra cups <laughs> to puke. To puke in. <laughs> One guy, three oh, cups. Dude, <laughs> I, the shots. I went home. We left. I, we all I just thought, left. I, I was, I was, was about to throw up. Night. My I mouth's sweaty I, now thinking about I it. I don't even. We never even told each other goodbye. No. We all just left and yeah, went home. Yeah, it's like a in bomb a scare. Direction. Everyone just left. Oh. Yeah, get the fuck, fuck out. Fuck, that was wild. <laughs> then I. Then I took a seventy dollar Uber ride home. It looked like someone. That's why. It looked like someone chewed up. A blueberry muffin with Coca Cola in their mouth and spit it in a cup. It was Repeatedly. fucking disgusting, and I don't know. Why, I don't. Is that? Does he? Is he a puker? 
Well, I mean, that's I, the we first were time all, I've seen that. We were all on the verge of being pukers <laughs> at that point. Let's <laughs> Come fucking on. admit that was it. a pie eating we, contest a reaction. Booze we kept. That was at the end of the night. I know. Too. We drank a lot while I've we were podcasting. I've never seen Andy. We were puke? doing shots while we podcasted. I mean, we were fucked up by that point. We were fucked so. up when we left Tommy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's uh, this is exactly <laughs> why you have to tour with issues with Andy. Do you have a tw- Twitter for issues with yep. Andy? At issues with Andy. Is, yeah, yeah. Get on that because you guys have to tour with that because Andy, especially on tour, is never out of those kind of stories, and he's still one of the funniest fucking people. I mean, I don't want to travel with him. <laughs> Too much work. I have to actually put in a fucking show that's worth the ticket price. <laughs> Andy, I, like, I can't have that fucking problem. We can always match our ticket price. Uh, free. free. <laughs> <laughs> Easy to hit that low bar. <laughs> Not if you tour with it. Yeah, I, what I are know. Eric and I were talking about it. We'll see what happens. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, follow uh, at issues with Andy. Uh, can't... Uh, can't recommend it enough. And now you know that you can start doing comedy in front of Andy on the road after the live podcast. And uh, after the show, they'll they'll put you in perspective. <laughs> you go, you were great. <laughs> that other guy's a fuck up. <laughs> Is he always with you, that last guy? Is he? <laughs> well, come on, I'm not crazy. Uh, Erickson's last. There's no way I put Andy last. That's <laughs> kind of how I saw it in my head. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <coughs> All right. Uh, you got plugs? Oh, you got your uh, dates in in March. Oh, yeah. I don't even know my dates. Let's uh, start Seattle. You got two two shows in Seattle early three, March. I think, don't we have three now? We Might. have three. They, uh, Hennigan added a third. I think we have two in Denver and other shits coming up. I just realized I haven't played fucking Phoenix or Tucson forever. Uh, yeah, we're, we're gonna we're, we'll hit the major markets. Get on the mailing list. Go to DougStandup.com and uh, the 2020 dates are already. Yeah, uh, you're not gonna in. hear me on fucking Bob and Tom promoting. So get on the mailing list. That's the only way you're gonna know that I'm in your town. DougStandup.com. All right, let's play some Chad Shank because I don't remember any of it. Other <laughs> you, than it you, was I, Doug, do you want to set up the clip? <laughs> <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> All right, get on to Patreon uh, for the uh, uh, fan appreciation uh, podcast. Because yeah, we go, do appreciate you. Go to uh, patreon.com slash Stanhope Podcast. Uh, as little as a dollar a month, and you'll get uh, at least one uh, podcast a month extra. And sometimes if you uh, show up at the show and I'm trying to be in the mood more and more, maybe I'll take you out and we'll just hang out like little guy the hippie. <laughs> <laughs> Play Chad Shank and then uh, throw in bingo after. Oh, okay, there it is. I didn't expect this either. <laughs> Happy New Year, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to the plaza. I ask you guys for a favor uh, right off the bat. Uh, not the usual ones of, uh, well, I guess those ones too. Don't uh, take pictures. Don't uh, film. Don't be an asshole. All of that stuff applies. But uh, it's my anniversary uh, tonight, tomorrow. And uh, I'm here in Vegas this whole time on the cheap. I went to a timeshare uh, presentation this morning to pay for my, uh, my stay. Uh, I didn't have tickets to come to this show, so I told Sano, can I do something? And uh, he views humiliation as a form of currency. So, uh, so, so, so the favor I get is, uh, so I, I, don't, I also don't want to pay for a, an anniversary present. So if everybody could just uh, 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 give it up for my wife, Jenny. Been married for 21 years. Jenny, I love you. That's for you. I didn't have to spend any money at all. I was completely free. Thanks. Thank you, guys. Oh, shit! It's Jenny. I almost kissed the microphone. I got so confused. Okay, so I'll, go, I'll, I'll humiliate myself for a couple of seconds, so then you guys can uh, go back to uh, 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 having fun. Uh, I, I, I don't have any jokes, but I can tell you stories about things that actually happened to me that uh, most people would probably keep their mouth shut about. <laughs> so I'm in my living room one day and I'm smoking pot 
and uh, the, it's up during a monsoon storm and the power went out and I was like oh shit the power went out and it came back on and I got up and I started hunting around the house for candles because I thought you know if the power goes out I want to have candles and uh, after I couldn't find any it fucking dawned on me that it was the middle of the day and uh, if the power went out again I could just open the fucking curtain because I'm an idiot <laughs> so that was that really happened uh, another thing was uh, I was sitting in my living room uh, smoking some weed. And I was trying to find something to watch. So I went on Hulu and I started flipping through and trying to find something to watch. And I found a tab that said history. And I said, oh, I like uh, uh, history. I like documentaries. I like the West. I like, you know, I like a lot of stuff about the history. And I clicked on it and then sat there confused why it was just a list of shit that I had already seen. <laughs> Rick and Morty? That's not history. What the Fucking stupid. Well, that happened as well. Uh, another time I was in my living room smoking weed. I smoke a lot of weed and I still have an incredible anger problem. Give it up for weed, thanks. Uh, 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 I, I also like cocaine, but I don't know where to get it and I can't afford it. So just I'm just putting that out there. Uh, uh, talk to you later, my friend. Um, so I'm sitting in my living room smoking weed and I, I, out the corner of my eye I see out of the window that somebody has parked in my driveway and I just lost my shit. I come in glued, flew out the door, I was ready to, uh, some of you might know that I have violent tendencies, other of you are just wondering why the fuck I'm up here, but I came out ready to kill whoever was parked in my driveway and uh, as I got to the gate I realized uh, it was me. Uh, it was my truck. I parked it there like 10 minutes before that. So, uh, yeah, uh, I'm a fucking idiot, and uh, thanks, everybody. Uh, now, now you get to listen to uh, real comedy and enjoy yourself. So uh, you know her from Roast Battle. You know her from uh, our podcast. Uh, you know her from her own tours, and uh, she's fantastic, everybody. Olivia Grace. <laughs> Okay, bye-bye now.